Hey guys, and welcome to another Starfield video from your favorite space pirate, Dread Captain James. I built a battleship, for lack of a better term. And it not only looks pretty good, but it handles well, and it's an absolute powerhouse. I'm going to show you how I did it, and I'd love to know, if you use the design, how you improve upon it. I won't keep you waiting, so let's jump in and get started. So, there are a couple of things you're going to need to know before you try to replicate this build. My character is above level 60, so part availability is very good. Also, my character has piloting, starship design, and a neutronic fusion maxed out. This allows for piloting of C-class ships, as well as installation of experimental ship parts and a massive bonus to my reactor. I built this ship in New Atlantis, and no main story or side mission quests have been completed. For the purpose of this video, the character was created, brought to the lodge, and then through the usage of console commands, artificially leveled up to level 70 and given perks necessary to complete this build. I also gave my character a million credits, knowing this build would be expensive. For the aesthetic, I stuck with Deimos parts, but realistically, any will do, so use what you prefer. Okay, that's about it for what you need to know. Let's get to what this build is. This ship is what I'm calling a battleship. It has high shield hit points, great maneuverability, high damage yield, and great potential for disabling enemy ships. Starting from scratch, the first thing I needed was a good reactor, one that would put out a lot of power. Dogstar SF40, which puts out 40 units of power, plus my perk allows for 45, and this is a great start. Since they're both chunky, the next thing I needed was a grab drive, and one that would provide good thrust. Giggity. Relodyne J52 Gamma Grav Drive did it for me, and it looks pretty good too. I put them together as my block for the back, with the reactor at the rear. Using the top snap point of the grav drive, I attached a 3x1 Deimos all-in-one berth, but you could do back-to-back 2x1s as well, as you'll see why in a minute. Under that, I attached the NG6 landing bay towards the rear of the module. Next, a 1x1 Deimos companionway at the end of the 3x1, followed by the cockpit, a Deimos D230.3 Phobos. Following this, we will need to outfit our ship with a lot of landing gears. Eight to be precise. Don't worry, we have plenty of room for them. So attach the Deimos 220CB landing gear to each snap point on each side of the halves until you have a centipede. Atop the companionway and just behind the cockpit, open structural and place the Deimos cowling, followed by two hull A's and a Deimos docker. And I know, this is ugly right now, but give it a chance. Atop the grab drive, attach another hull A, and to the snap point of the rear of the hull A, attach a belly four-piece for our tail. It should rest just above the reactor. On the second to last hull, attach a Deimos wing A to either side you should be seeing the tail section coming to life and taking shape. Ooh. 
In the center of the tail section, attach a demo spine D to add the fin section. Just in front of that, add demo spine A to slope it into the body. The war whale is taking form and it's looking better. On the side of the docker, we need fuel, so add the Dog Star H30 Atlas HE3 tank, as it looks pretty good and has a capacity of 400. On the other side, we're going to drop cargo, so add Sextant 400cm Ballast Cargo Hold, which will give you a cool 435 cargo. More can be added later to your heart's content, but I wanted this to have at least some cargo space. On the hull in front of the docker, next we're going to add our shields. Sextant Assurance SG 1800 Shield Generator pumps out 1600 shield points. And while it's not cheap, it's effective AF. It's also easy to drop on any point on top of your build without having to worry about your docker. Time for the engines. Using the top snap point of the reactor, attach Amon Dunn Dunn 71 engines on both sides. They should snugly fit in there and look pretty aggressive. Below them, on the next snap point down, attach Relodyne White Dwarf 1020 engines on either side. This combination gives us a great amount of power and maneuverability, as well as it looks very much like a Star Wars ship from behind, and I love that. Okay, time to add some teeth to this thing, and then we're almost done. On the forward hole A, just behind the cowling, add a horizon weapon mount on each side. On top of the cockpit, on that snap point, add a Ballistic Solutions PB300 Alpha Beam. Then, on each of the top mounts of the Horizon Weapon Mounts you just installed, add another PB300 for a total of three. On the lower snap points of the Horizon Weapon Mount, place a Light Scythe Fulminator 8000 Suppressor. You should have two of those when you're done with this. Underneath the cockpit, there's another weapon snap point, and to that, we're going to add a Light Scythe at Atlatl 280C Missile Launcher. Just one. This missile will do a whopping 480.5 damage to both shields and hull. We don't need to let these off the chain very often, but it's pretty nice when we do. Now, the only error we should be seeing is that we don't have weapons assigned, so... I like to put the Alpha Beams in W0, the Suppressors in W1, and the Missile Launcher in W2. We should now see nominal across the board. This ship should fly and eat things for breakfast without ever running out of firepower. Paint and color it the way you like, and then go ahead and take it out for a spin.
for the record, if you would like to add another PB300 to the mix, this supports it. And to make it work and look good, I dropped them both on the back tail snap points. I also moved the missile launcher up on top of the cockpit just because I thought it looked better up there. Four PB300s is absolutely overkill and not much can handle that kind of firepower, so enjoy being OP. Factor in that you'll actively be disabling your opponent with the suppressors, and if they should last more than a few shots, the absurdity of that missile once locked will definitely handle the job. I love the fact that this ship looks good, handles well, deals copious amounts of death, is fast, and looks plausible as a starship. I don't toot my own horn often, but this ship is pretty cool, and if you put your own spin on it, I think you'll love it. Let me know in the comments how you would change the design or what you use currently as your go-to. I found this combo to be absolutely unstoppable. Alright, well there you have it my take on a star field battleship if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up on the video it helps a lot to get through the algorithm also i'm live here and on twitch doing all kinds of space related things so make sure to drop by and hang out sometime you can find the links in the description i appreciate you making it this far and i hope you found something valuable in this video thanks again for watching have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one